Since the dawn of paleontology, the seas of the prehistoric pasts have haunted the imaginations of people around the world for centuries. Filled with creatures unlike any under the seas of our modern day, their fossils inspiring some of the greatest paleontologists, paleoartists, and giving rise to many artworks evoking the haunting appearances of the lost world beneath the waves. A world that continues to expand with each new discovery. However, in the rich shallow seas of the Cretaceous, swam an animal unlike any creature around at the time. A plesiosaur unique in a family of vast oddities, evoking the ideas and artworks of days long past. A creature known as Serpentosuchops. Serpentosuchops was a medium-sized plesiosaur from the late Cretaceous period, living approximately 70 to 68 million years ago in what is now Wyoming, a place far from any sea we know today, but was once submerged under a shallow sea. The first specimen was discovered in 1995 in an area known as the Pier Shale Formation, and its remains would go unnamed for nearly three decades until the year 2022, unveiling a creature that looked like it was straight out of a 19th century painting. This creature will be published under the moniker Serpentisuchops, meaning crocodile-faced serpent, aptly named for its elongated skull and slender, serpent-like neck. Measuring in at an estimated 7 meters or 23 feet, it was a fairly large animal, albeit fairly average for a plesiosaur. However, the size of Serpentisuchops is the only thing average about it, for this creature is unlike very few of its kin known before it. Serpentisuchops belongs to the order of reptiles known as Plesiosauria, or the Plesiosaurs, famous for their four flippers, small heads, and long necks. However, this image only makes up a portion of this group of reptiles. Plesiosaurs were an extremely diverse group of animals, with several branches spread across its vast family tree. Serpentisuchops belongs to the polycotylid family of plesiosaurs, a group of plesiosaurs that took on roles similar to dolphins in the Cretaceous seas, with moderately sized necks and long, slender snouts for catching fish, and can move in great bursts of speed, with four powerful flippers. However, Serpentisuchops is unique in its family, for having both a long, slender snout and a long, slender neck to go with it. But what brought about this departure from the typical polycotylid body plan? It's a question almost as old as plesiosaurs themselves, with an answer that may lie in their evolution. Plesiosaurs first emerged during the mid-Triassic period, at the climax of Earth's recovery from one of its worst mass extinctions, descending from former land-dwelling reptiles that took advantage of the roles left empty in the seas and oceans before subsequently exploding in diversity in the Jurassic period, taking on different niches and adaptations in order to exploit a literal endless sea of opportunity. And this knack for diversification allowed them to thrive all the way into the Cretaceous period as some of the most dominant reptiles in Earth's waters. Polycotylids themselves are very derived plesiosaurs, or plesiosaurs that have more specialized traits than their ancestors and Serpentisuchops took this step to a whole new level. Instead of having a short neck like its cousins, Serpentisuchops appears to have re-evolved its long neck, convergently to those of elasmosaurs and other families of long-necked plesiosaurs. While it is unknown why or how so many plesiosaurs evolved such long necks, it's thought that these necks played a role in hunting. These necks would have certainly proved to be advantageous adaptations, allowing long-necked plesiosaurs to glide almost unseen near underwater prey, sweeping their necks on unsuspecting animals and taking them by surprise. It's thought that Serpentisuchops evolved its own long neck for a similar purpose, extending the long reach of its long neck for a set of long, slender jaws lined with a set of interlocking teeth. These jaws were characteristic to polycotylid plesiosaurs, and it's thought that Serpentisuchops likely inherited this trait from its shorter-necked ancestors. Like other polycotylids, 
It's likely Serpentosuchops use these slender jaws to ensnare slippery, fast-moving prey, such as fish and squid. Simply put, it seems that Serpentosuchops potentially hunted by taking on some of the best aspects of different plesiosaurs. However, these long necks came with disadvantages, such as creating additional drag in the water and making long neck plesiosaurs much slower than their shorter neck relatives, a problem that only grew the bigger the plesiosaur got. Serpentosuchops would have faced the same challenges with its own long neck, but fortunately, it may have been able to bypass this issue thanks to the shape of its skull. The narrow, elongated jaws of Serpentosuchops would have reduced hydraulic resistance and decreased drag, and it helped that Serpentosuchops wasn't the largest plesiosaur. However, Serpentosuchops had one more trick up its sleeve, a set of four powerful flippers. While we currently don't have fossil material of Serpentosuchops' limbs at the moment, like other plesiosaurs, it would have likely possessed four flippers that would have propelled them through the water. That being said, we actually do have the pubic bones that show signs of connecting to powerful muscle attachments that would have allowed Serpentosuchops an ability to almost fly through the water. These adaptations would have played a very useful role in its environment, and Serpentosuchops needed every advantage it could get as it lived in a sea where competition was high and the stakes were higher. During the late Cretaceous period, much of North America was submerged under a shallow sea known as the Western Interior Sea, filled with what many could describe as literal sea monsters. From the enormous carnivorous fish like Zephactinus that swam alongside sharks that were bigger than today's great whites, and sitting at the top of it all, were the massive marine lizards called mosasaurs, the largest reaching lengths of 15 meters or 40 to 50 feet. Even the plesiosaurs were nothing to scoff at, some elasmosaurs reaching equal or even greater lengths. In such a sea of monsters, it's almost daunting to imagine Serpentosuchops or any animal would stand a chance. Fortunately, Serpentosuchops had a unique combination of adaptations that helped to keep up with the competition. In a 2022 paper describing the animal, it suggested that Serpentosuchops' long neck and other specialized adaptations might have evolved for the beneficence of niche partitioning, or the phenomenon of animals with similar adaptations exploiting different roles in the environment to avoid direct competition. Based on its adaptations, Serpentosuchops was likely specializing in hunting smaller prey, and by specializing in hunting smaller prey items, it may have avoided competition with larger, more generalized hunters in its environment. It wouldn't be the first time plesiosaurs developed specialized adaptations to partition the resources in their environment. In fact, the diversity of plesiosauria is defined by so many of its members developing their own unique adaptations to hunt different types of prey and survive under different environmental pressures. From the deep diving abyssosaurus with its gigantic eyes to see in the dark depths, to the bottom feeding cryptoclitus that scraped along the sea floor, snatching up any creatures beneath the sand. Others took the plesiosaur body plan to extravagant extremes, like the elasmosaurs, who expanded the length of their already enormous necks and grew to immense sizes while others, like pliosaurs, took the role as apex predators, trading in their long necks for massive jaws to restrain and pulverize large prey. It's ironic that as unique Serpentosuchops is, it was merely carrying on the age-old tradition of plesiosaurs on taking unique traits to occupy unique roles in their ecosystems. In a way, Serpentosuchops represents the best parts of Plesiosauria. <laughs>